Thank you for joining us at Google Cloud Next 21. My name is Sam Ganga, and I'm a partner at KPMG. With me today is Bob Howland, Chief Digital Officer of Don Foods. Don Foods is a global leader in bakery manufacturing and ingredients distribution business. And about two years ago, launched an ambitious digital transformation initiative. KPMG has had the privilege of being Don's partner in both the strategy and execution of this initiative. Bob and I would like to take you through the Don digital transformation journey. But first, Bob, please share a bit about your background, your role at Don, and some company history. Thanks, Sam. You know, great to be here with you. Um, I've been in e-commerce e for 20 years. I've launched over 25 different e-commerce businesses that today are doing billions of dollars of revenue. Dawn Foods is an amazing company, 100-year-old, privately held, family-run company, really a leader in the U.S. and in many of the markets it serves around the globe. And for me, the, the opportunity to join Dawn was really about taking a company on this digital journey, really fulfilling their digital ambition from the ground up. Thank you, Bob. Um, so Don's a hundred year old company and has gone through several transformations, right? And been part of the Great Depression, the oil crisis, and over the years gone through lots of ups and downs. Um, with regards to this transformation, what were the market dynamics influencing your decision uh, to launch uh, at this time? I think there were two things. So I joined the company a little over two years ago. You know, they had made the commitment to go out and engulf on this digital transformation as they called it, but they really didn't know what that meant. And they really felt that they needed someone to head that up. There were two things that really drove that for them. Number one, their customers were asking. So in the bakery ingredient space, there's not, there was not online ordering happening for Dawn or, or any of their competitors. And their customers were saying, hey, we, we would like to order online like we do in every other walk of life. When are you gonna bring that to the table? So that was the first one. The second one, and we'll get into this in more detail, there are a lot of you know, business model opportunities for the company. And in many cases, the business felt instead of incrementally addressing some of these things, why not leapfrog over all of these challenges, um, years of maybe underinvestment in the infrastructure, leapfrog over that and really build a digital first business model and build it the right way. And it really for the company, the second point was all about future proofing the business. And so you know, we really set out to do that. We had the benefit of having the CEO and the board fully on board. And then we really set about in terms of the partnership with KPMG to start to bring that to life. Yeah, no, I, I remember that and, and remember the, the, the tireless work that you did in order to get uh, stakeholder alignment. Um, and we began partnering with your newly formed digital team in early 2019. Um, and our joint approach was, was really about business-led digital transformation. Um, how does how did this guide your journey? Yeah, it, it really did. I mean, we really thought about this business first, customer centric, and really put the technology piece in the in the back as, as something we could readily do. So again, I've, I've done this a number of times, and I tell people time and time again, there are three elements to this. There's the people side, there's the process side, there's the tech side. The tech side is super easy maybe 20% of the effort. The people side, both internally, changing the hearts and minds of our internal employees, changing the, the way customers behave in the marketplace, that was really going to be you know, a game changer for us. And so we really need to kind of break down all of this and leveraging KPMG's connected enterprise framework really helped us give each of the key functions really a scorecard, you know, key questions to ask you know, how can you go about this in customer service? If you're in the operation side or the supply chain side, you know, what are the things that are going to hold you back from on time and full distribution? And what are the things that you can then do to overcome those? And so this framework that you brought to the table really allowed us to go out and partner with each of the functions and really drive the important part of the change management, the people side and the process side. 
I remember those discussions. And one of the things that you mentioned was, of course, you know, the 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 technology side, while it might be the long phone in the town, is not necessarily where you're going to spend most of your effort. But you you did give a lot of consideration to the technology stack. Could you share a little bit uh, with the listeners about, you know, what were the guiding principles for your technology stack, your digital architecture? And how did the Google platform help enable that transformation? How did it provide the chassis and, trans- and, and, the, and the infrastructure for that? Yeah, for, for sure. I mean, full disclosure here, I, I have worked at two platform companies in my background. And so I knew firsthand the benefits of, of going to a one-stop bundled platform and, and some of the challenges. I also knew that Dawn, you know, Dawn is first and foremost a manufacturing and distribution company. And we were never going to have the ability to have a very expensive technology solution. And so as we thought more and more about this, we really thought about this concept of modular. You know, e-commerce is becoming very commoditized now. And so, you know, you need someone to run your back end, right? To you know, provide the checkout, take the payment, right? You also need a content engine to allow all the great content that, you know, is really the skin of the website. You also need a, a product information management tool. And as we thought about all the four, five, six, whatever key modules, key components of this engine we were trying to build, we realized that no one provider had it all. And that was a really big epiphany for us back in 2019. But when we looked at the landscape, there were really two or three best in class uh, solution providers for each of these key components. And when we started to have conversations with them, what we found were that they were having conversations with each other as well. They were building in an API alignment capability so that if, if we chose the two of them together, they were already connected to each other. And so that, that helped us understand that this whole composable commerce concept is something that potentially we could bring alive. And so it really rested on this concept of microservices, you know, really taking each piece of a, of a user action to the smallest possible uh, technology solution. We really thought about API. We really wanted the entire site and all of the different data points to be API first. With Google Cloud's input and a lot of help, we really wanted this to be a cloud first solution. And finally, you know, we really wanted this to be headless. We really, we really want separation between the back end of the house and the front end of the house. And we're, lo and behold, we found best in class providers, many of them that had Google relationships already. And the Google Cloud infrastructure really allowed us to enable this a la carte or module or architecture to come to life. Uh, that, that is uh, an excellent sort of vision that you had from the beginning and your ability to execute that vision. Uh, I, I know you said this multiple times in our, in our journey together and you, you, you maniacally focused on the business outcomes. Uh, can you share some of the measurable outcomes uh, that you've achieved from this uh, from this initiative for Don? Yeah, I mean, one of the things we looked at pretty clearly was we thought that by by building an online product catalog, which the company had never had before, that we would have the dynamic of customers discovering products that they didn't know we offered, and by that fact, we would have customers putting more SKUs in their basket, and therefore we would see an incremental lift in the number of SKUs and the size of the basket for an online customer as opposed to an offline customer. We we estimated it based on experience that I and others had to be somewhere in the neighborhood of five to 10% by year one. So by the 12th month after launch, and we're we're right on track for those numbers today, which is very, very exciting. And, And that's probably the biggest customer feedback we get is, wow, I didn't know you had this. Now you are getting a bigger and bigger piece of my business because I know that you can be my main or a more significant provider for me. And so in addition to incremental SKUs, we're seeing just crazy customer satisfaction numbers. You know, they, our customers are incredibly satisfied with not only the platform we've given them, but they're becoming more satisfied with the Dawn relationship which is frankly something we didn't expect in the first six to 12 months. And we're still you know, really getting our sea legs under us from an e-commerce perspective. 
uh, makes a lot of sense. I think you always maintain that artisan bakers uh, are a partner, right? They're not necessarily just a, a customer relationship. You want to be with them on this journey. Um, love the fact that, you know, you, you had this focus on the business and delivering for the business, for your customers, for the, on the customer experience, as you said, business-led, um, customer-centric, technology-enabled. Um, and the fact that it all came together under the Google Cloud Platform. Um, you've been on this journey for almost three years, you and the team, Bob, and the, and the organization at large. Uh, you've been successful by, by most standards, if not all standards. Um, what's the one thing you would do differently um, you know, that'll benefit our listeners as they start on their journey or they've been on their journey? Yeah, it's an interesting question. So I have a, a very large network of uh, e-commerce professionals, digital executives across the U.S., certainly, and across the world. Um, the one refrain, the constant refrain I hear from my peers is that they don't have support and buy-in from their boards and their executive teams, and they struggle to get that. Um, I feel fortunate that, you know, in my boss and the CEO and in our board, we, we have had buy-in. But, but beside, and in spite of that, I do think if I was to do this over again, I would have put 2x the focus on change management. I would have really spent much more time on the people and process side. Um, and why do I say that? So, you know, change is hard for people. And when you... You know, it's kind of like getting married, right? The honeymoon phase is great, but once you're married, you know, it's actually a different phase of, of the relationship. It requires just as much involvement. And, and oftentimes you find that that doesn't happen, right? And so in the lead up to our launch, which was a national event, there was buy-in, everybody was rowing in the same direction. We did find that after launch, some people said, hey, we checked that box, right? And, and, that, and they're hard to get back. It's hard to get people back to the table to say, hey, we just launched technology, but this change management, this building a business model that's e-commerce first, and oh, by the way, there's a lot of other things about the business that we want to bring into yeah. the digital world and future-proof. We, we lost some of the ability um, to, bring, to continue people on that journey um, once we launched. And, and therefore, I, with all humility, I say I wish I'd spent more time on the change management piece up front to really, really try to get that foundational. That's interesting you said that because I know how much time you spent on stakeholder alignment, on leadership alignment, on change management. And for you to say that you could have spent more time is very telling and you walked into this knowing that that's the case you put a lot of energy against it but i hope our listeners are taking that away saying you know you need to spend a lot more time on change management than you originally might anticipate um bob i want to thank you for your time it's always a pleasure talking to you every time i talk to you i learn something new and this time was no different thank you again for your time bob thank you sam great to be together